When you first use your pump, you'll want to inspect the unit to see that no parts were broken in shipment or are missing. A pump instruction sheet and parts list, an engine instruction sheet, are all supplied with each unit. Fill the crankcase with high-grade oil as specified on the engine nameplate or the instruction book and fill the fuel tank with fresh gasoline. Provide the necessary space around a pump for inspection, servicing of the unit, and adequate ventilation. Set pump on firm footing and make sure the pump will not move due to vibration. Place the pump on boards or a hard surface or on Pacer's optional roll cage and not in the soft mud. Pumps improperly placed have been known to fall into the excavation when the suction line was full of water. When first installed, it is necessary to fill the pumps with liquid in order to provide the initial prime. It is not necessary to fill the suction line. To give the pump its initial prime, first remove the priming fitting in top of the pump casing. Fill the pump casing with liquid, replace the plug, and then start the pump. The shorter the suction lift, the faster the pump will prime. Never restrict the inlet or outlet on initial startup. After the first priming, the pumps will retain sufficient liquid for proper operation. Make sure that the hose used on the suction does not have a collapsed liner or any breaks, cuts, or pinholes in it. An air leak will prevent priming and will reduce the capacity of the pump. A size larger than the pump's connections will increase the capacity of the pump under low heads, but will decrease the speed of priming. When using rigid piping, proper independent support should be provided for the piping. It should not be supported or carried by the pump. It is advisable to install a short length of hose between the pump and pipe on both suction and discharge. All piping, and especially that on the suction side, should be made as short as possible with the fewest elbows in order to avoid unnecessary friction loss. The hose on the discharge side may be of the collapsible type or the rigid type. Again, make sure that hose and fittings are in good condition. It is not advisable to use pipe sizes smaller than those for which the pump is fitted. On the other hand, in order to maintain a high capacity, larger sizes may be advisable in some cases. A proper strainer must always be installed on the suction line. Otherwise, the pump may be damaged and become clogged and its capacity reduced if not stopped. The strainer should have a net area of at least four times that of the suction pipe and should be inspected and if necessary cleaned at more or less frequent intervals. Self-priming centrifugal pumps may be located as high as 25 feet to the suction inlet of the pump above the source of liquid. It is however good practice to keep the suction lift to a minimum. 15 feet is ideal. It is best if the suction pipe has a gradual rise towards the pump. While this is essential with a regular centrifugal pump, it is also best practice with a self-priming pump. On long discharge lines, the discharge pipe should be one size and sometimes two sizes larger than the discharge fitting of the pump in order to decrease friction loss. The length of the line, number of bends and fittings, together with the quantity of liquid to be pumped, should be taken into consideration in selecting the proper size of pipe. Two discharge lines may be used. On high head jobs, a check valve should be installed in a discharge line close to the pump. A check valve is required to protect the pump against excessive surge of pressure from a vertical discharge line. Self-priming centrifugal pumps are provided with a built-in check valve in the pump on the suction side. This valve comes into operation to prevent the loss of priming liquid in the pump casing during idle pump periods. A foot valve on the end of the suction pipe is not a necessity. Should conditions require that the pump be throttled, slow down the engine when possible. However, it is essential to maintain full engine speed to prime properly. Proper maintenance of your engine-powered pump will provide years of uninterrupted service. The engine manufacturers recommend the following services. Drain and replace the engine oil after the first five hours of use and then every 50 hours or annually, whichever comes first. A synthetic 5W30 will suffice for all types of climate. Be sure to check the oil level before each start. 
Clean the air filter after 25 hours of use or after use in a dusty environment. Replace the air filter annually. You'll also want to replace the spark plug annually. Refer to your engine manual for proper plug and gap setting. Use clean gasoline, ethanol free if possible. If ethanol is added, use a stabilizer mix to prevent possible fuel system problems.